returned yesterday to be the Deputy Minister for Women uh, Affairs <laughs> because we felt that the only way we could cut across this uh, uh, understanding of uh, gender issues is to make a, a man a Deputy Minister of Women's Issues. And uh, he has uh, been uh, enlivened since then and uh, has learned a lot about the issues we're dealing with. Ours is a social transformation issue. Uh, it is not as uh, vibrant as the, most of the other commissions that you've been to because we are all in agreement about what should be done to transform our society. What we wanted to put across uh, very early on in the, in the session is that uh, when we talk about um, uh, social transformation, it is almost like it is secondary to economic transformation when in fact it is a first generation right, social uh, rights. It is part, it is the underbelly of our Freedom Charter and it is also uh, part of uh, what we are wanting to drive to ensure that we change from what we found in this country to what, it, what the kind of country that we would like to have. So we would like at all times that our people uh, understand that it is a radical socio-economic transformation that we agreed to at the 53rd Congress of the ANC. Beyond that, we then deal with the issues that, are, that concern us, and we, we put across the, the background of the society that we are talking about and how far we are in changing it from what we found to where we would like to, uh, to be in the future. We acknowledge the fact that government has done exceedingly well from de on the delivery of uh, services in this sector. However, we're very concerned about the breakdown of the social fabric of our society. This is one area which uh, remains a stubborn, stubbornly backward in the way that we would, in the way that we define it, and we've been concerned about that. So naturally, we went to those uh, areas that are still outstanding in the work that we should be doing as an organization in ensuring that we can completely transform our society. Those areas have to do with the creation of a national identity so that we all relate to uh, the country, to each other as one. We deal with the issues of the breakdown of our social fabric, especially as we look at the rise in crime, especially as we look at uh, the violation of the rights of women and children and other vulnerable people. Uh, we have looked at uh, the issue of uh, the, the vulnerable people that remain uh, outside of our main focus, such as uh, people living with disability. And uh, we go on to see how we can reflect in this society what we would like to see a few years from now. And what we have here are a whole lot of recommendations that we are taking back to our um, communities so that by the time we have the 54th Con Congress, uh, possibly here in Nazrek, we will have refined this and we will adopt this as the basis of how we, we intend to transform our society. Okay. Uh, Zizi Goto would like me to read some of the highlights to you because uh, you clearly do not have the document. And I will proceed to do so. We would like all branches of the ANC to be effective uh, agents of change as leaders in our communities. Uh, we would like to see that the ANC is at the forefront of radical social transformation and our agenda to achieve social cohesion and national building. To this end, we would like to urge all ANC members to be exemplary in their conduct and make sure that at all times they reflect what the ANC ideology is and reflect the fact that we as ANC members are leaders of society. We would like to make sure that ANC branches be clear on the difference between the ANC national anthem and the African national anthem. Um, we feel that uh, it is important that we stress this because it is a very important part of our social cohesion. And we started off our session yesterday with singing the uh, national anthem in its uh, proper format. Uh, there was also a feeling that um, we should increase uh, 
our local content, especially as we deal with uh, the education of our, of our, of our citizens that uh, quite a lot of the time that we are on radio and uh, in other broadcast areas, we do not take into consideration local content. And this is also um, applicable to our libraries. We, we, we have recognized that we have libraries in most parts, that we would like to have libraries, but most of the books in our libraries are, are not reflective of the people of this country or the culture of this country. And we would like to make sure that that is corrected. Um, we would like to uh, strengthen our relationship at the ANC branch with faith-based organizations, sporting uh, uh, organizations, so as to ensure that all of these things that uh, underpin social co cohesion are within reach of our communities and our, our branches. Um, we would like to ensure that uh, uh, we legislate against ha hate crime. Oh, no, we, sorry, that hate um, crime be legislated as a priority legislation. Uh, in this case, we would be in a difficulty because we have to first confront the fact that we have not yet got beyond uh, dealing with the issue of racism. So we spend a lot of time dealing with the issue of racism. How do we define racism? How do we, uh, it is one of those intangibles that we still are trying to pin down. However, we believe that by the time we've pinned it down, we've got to legislate against racism. We've got to also make sure that we understand it in all its, uh, in, in all its finery and in all its n n newest manifestation. We're also very concerned about the possibility that as we do this, we're not paying attention to uh, the resurgence of uh, tribalism. Um, we're concerned about patriarchy. We believe that uh, if we're going to have a truly transformed society, then we've got to deal with patriarchy. We've got to make sure that our children grow up in a society where all are equal and all are respected and all have the, the normal uh, respect that uh, we should have. We believe that we would like to have this as part of our syllabus so that people understand what patriarchy is and uh, in the same way as we would like them to understand what racism is. Those are two evils that we would like to put behind us. Um, as, the, as, as we look at the breakdown of our social fabric, we've been particularly concerned about the rising crime against women, and especially girl children. Uh, we've been uh, uh, analyzing this, and uh, we view it with abhorrence that we have this kind of uh, society that is beginning to turn against uh, women in their vulnerability and especially the girl child. And we've taken this as a priority uh, matter for ourselves to ensure that we have sufficient protection for girl children uh, in this uh, space that we're in. What we've done is we have resolved that as the ANC, we've got to work out uh, 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 village and street communities. We know where we have uh, girl children that might be vulnerable and we are going to launch a campaign of know your neighbor so that we feel protected in our neighborhood and when there is any vulnerable child in our neighborhood, somebody would know about it and we would like to make sure that for every uh, area that we have, um, every community that we have, we have what is called a safe house uh, we would like to change the name of safe houses and call them uh, houses for, for survivors. We're going to call them survival houses for survivors, and we would like to make sure that we have enough so, um, social workers there to assist people uh, who are in distress. We analyze the phenomenon where um, women uh, suffer domestic violence and this is something that is beyond the immediate reach of our policing agencies. Uh, they report this and soon thereafter are back in the same fold and it is a recurring crime. We would like to find that uh, we have other ways of dealing with uh, this particular matter of domestic violence where women are empowered to stand up and ensure that they are able to look after their children and protect their children which is why we're went to wanting to make sure that we can uh, ensure a greater 
um, number of women in our community policing forums. We are still concerned about uh, uh, place names uh, and we would like to uh, fast track the renaming of um, offensive names in our neighborhood. We would like to uh, bring to um, the attention of the ANC that when we talk about vulnerability, it is not only vulnerability of young women, women and young women, but it is also the vulnerability of LGBTIQ communities, and we've got to put into that albinism. It has not been in our vocabulary, but we would like to put it in our vocabulary. These are vulnerable people that need the protection of society. And we would like to make sure that any antisocial beliefs that are creeping in are dealt with uh, um, as, as a crime. Uh, an example of this uh, antisocial belief is that which is uh, traditionally referred to as um, uh, traditional solutions to um, protection against crime. It is believed, um, and perhaps this is this the president will himself uh, confirm, that he, there is a rise in eastern Pondoland of uh, gangsterism that believes that if uh, they have committed a crime, the only way they would be invisible to the police is by getting sucking out the blood of a woman, and in that way they would be. Uh, as Zizi says, rewind, erase. But I, I, I was... No, no, I know I'm a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I know those vampires. Uh, look, it was, it was just one example. What we're saying is that all backward forms of traditional beliefs must be dealt with because if they have negative consequences, then we have the rise of something like this. Um, we, we have looked at the policies that we have had in the past, and they've been very good policies, and the delivery has been very good, but in those areas where we have not delivered, we find that it is because of lack of a mechanism of monitoring. Good policies, policies do not on their own produce good results, but we must make sure that they are properly monitored and we are able to evaluate the delivery that comes out of those good policies. Um, we are concerned about uh, the rise in racial tensions in some areas. We are concerned about the issue of xenophobia, as you saw in the previous two years. Uh, we are concerned about uh, those people that find themselves unprotected by our society, and we would like to get to the bottom of this and make sure that everybody who lives in South Africa has a better life and feels protected. We are concerned about uh, poverty. Poverty is... Uh, continuing to be a concern because we believe that most of the, the social ills that we're experiencing is as a result of poverty and lack of employment, especially for the youth. This is, our, this is our, where, where we find the root cause of where we are right now. So we're wanting to make sure that we can deal with poverty, we can deal with employment, especially amongst the youth. However, in areas where we deal with matters that are cross-cutting with other sectors, we, are, we have referred those matters to uh, this, the economic sector. But we are very concerned about the huge unemployment about youth, in youth, and we find that uh, this is a, a, a part of the cause for why they are so antisocial sometimes and why they resort to antisocial behavior. We are also concerned about um, those matters that add to the antisocial behavior of our youth, like taverns near schools or taverns in locations of uh, where, our, where our communities should be uh, living. Um, members of the media, we have a very long list of, uh, of recommendations. As you can expect, this is something that touches every delegate. Every delegate comes from a community, and every community has a problem. And every delegate has come here with a problem that their community is experiencing, uh, and we have uh, noted this, and we're attending it, and we have grouped them in relation to uh, um, how we are going to uh, ensure that they are dealt with. 
and we're going to make uh, we're going to ask Zizi to make uh, the document available to you so that if there are any questions we're ready to uh, tackle them but basically this is the underbelly of what the Freedom Charter intended us to deal with. When the Freedom Charter was adopted, every uh, household was asked, what is it that you would like to see changed in the kind of society we would like to build after this? And when they compiled this, it was what affected them most. And therefore, we've given ourselves a great deal of time. We had two commissions dealing with this very extensively. We had very robust discussions, robust but very focused around how do we ensure that we can truly create a better life for all our people. And we're going to ensure that this is given to you. We are also wanting children's courts uh, as one of the matters that uh, has, risen, has arisen, um, specialized children's courts. And we would like to make sure that those uh, matters that deal with children's uh, child criminality against children or violence against children to be prioritized. An example was made of how children will go to court and their cases are postponed and six months later they have to relive their experience of having been violated. And we believe this is not good and we would like to urge the justice sector to ensure that uh, violence against children uh, cases be prioritized. We would like to make sure that children's courts are separate from normal courts uh, and, and dealt with in a particular way. There is a suggestion that uh, we um, pay particular attention to a child-headed household and that in these particular cases the child support grant should be extended from age, age 18 to 21 provided that the beneficiaries are still studying. Uh, I'll leave the rest then to uh, Comrade Bhutti to deal with matters that uh, I have not uh, dealt with right now. Thank you. I think uh, just a bri uh, some uh, brief uh, uh, additions. Uh, there was a strong view from the uh, conference that we need to put in legislation, strong legislation that will uh, deal with uh, uh, people who uh, damage public property uh, and that we must also educate the public on the consequences of uh, damaging uh, public property. I think we've seen recently where uh, communities protesting and as part of those protests we've seen destruction of schools and other public properties. And we really want to uh, you know, call on all our communities to ensure that we, uh, the least that we could do is to protect those uh, uh, institutions. Uh, secondly, that we see education, sports, recreation, arts and culture, and heritage activities, clubs, and other programs as very central towards uh, social cohesion and nation building. Um, and that uh, we uh, will be uh, ensuring that the uh, ANC uh, government uh, puts in resources towards these programs as part of promoting social cohesion and uh, nation uh, building. Uh, and then there was a proposal that uh, the uh, ANC men must be visible uh, in the 365 days campaign against, uh, I mean, uh, for, uh, for, for violence against women and children, and that in August, this was a proposal that was adopted, that in August 2017, ANC branches uh, should uh, all hold men's matches against uh, uh, violence against women and children under the banner of not in my name, uh, count me out, and that drastic measures should be taken against perpetrators, and a message that the ANC cares for women and children should be a part of the central uh, message. Uh, there's also strong proposals around the social challenges of racial tensions, xenophobia, violence against women, uh, uh, children and other vulnerable uh, 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 groupings. And then 
uh, the effective resourcing of government structures to fulfill their functions must be focused on, and in particular, the municipal infra infrastructure grant and the urban settlement development grant contribution to sports and recreation. And there was a, a proposal for uh, this to be ring fenced and 15 to 20 percent of the uh, budget uh, targeted at that, uh, especially uh, most of the st uh, structures from the uh, countryside or the rural areas uh, would raise this uh, matter quite sharply that uh, you know this would help in uh, funding infrastructure that's relating to sports uh, and other uh, facilities. The um, then there was, uh, again, the uh, call around the need to have compuls compulsory uh, provision of sanitary towels to girls and women by the state, starting with the indigent uh, girl and learners, and the zero rating for uh, sanitary uh, products. Um, then the whole question of the abuse of... Uh, Religion. I think we've all seen uh, churches that spray people with doom and people being made to eat grass and all of that, and that, that uh, there must be legislation to try and regulate and curb uh, the, uh, this unethical and abusive uh, churches or the abusing of traditional and religious uh, practices for the benefit of... Uh, the, of individuals, um, the, okay, then the, the uh, NYDA uh, must be strengthened uh, and also be uh, financially resourced so that it delivers effective youth programs together with the, uh, uh, or that includes the National Youth Service the extended public works program uh, targeting youth and other youth uh, employment programs as flagships of youth development in government and that consideration should be given towards the young pioneers and also the uh, Masupa uh, Tsila. And, and I think finally around human settlement, transformatory urban planning should aim at changing the apartheid special residential patterns um, and that uh, we need to build integrated cities. I think we uh, all know that the uh, face of human settlement uh, in our country uh, has not significantly changed. There are still areas that are designated in terms of uh, racial groupings and that the uh, human settlement, uh, special development uh, plan should be focused at deracializing our communities, uh, and I think uh, the quite a strong point raised around the fact that people spend more money going and more time going to work and other recreational facilities because of the apartheid special development, and that this is one of the things that uh, 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 that needs to be uh, looked at. And finally, that uh, uh, human uh, uh, settlement would be looking at setting aside. 30 percent, uh, which would uh, benefit designated groups uh, in terms of their housing program that includes um, women, youth, military veterans, and also people with disabilities. So in a nutshell, those are some of the uh, proposals that are going to be taken back to uh, branches for further discussions and finalization at the national conference at the end of the year. Yes, in addition on the issue of uh, human settlements, uh, uh, we have a resolution here, and I hope that it is adopted, that all state land and public land within the precincts of the city or within easy access of the city should first be given to human settlements before any consideration of sale of that land. Uh, and uh, where possible, uh, they, we will use the expropriation instrument to ensure that all unused building is turned in the inner city is turned into residential uh, units, and in this way we will also be able to accommodate students uh, that are in that particular area. 
Finally, when you have your document, you will find an issue which um, has arisen in the, in the plenary as a contentious issue. Uh, the province of Gauteng has proposed to us that uh, we decriminalize sex workers. And we put it across as a, a proposal and a recommendation until we found that the plenary is not uh, too happy with that proposal. Uh, and in the discussions that we had, we had actually indicated that before we have something um, placed before a conference, it should have gone through the necessary discussions that we have in the Social Transformation Committee. And this one was sprung on us at, uh, at conference without going through the necessary process of consultation. So we did expect that we would have uh, um, a fallout with, with plenary. So when you come across your documentation and there is this matter of uh, sex workers being, uh, the, their work being decriminalized, it is a proposition from Gauteng. It has not yet been proposed and we will in time withdraw that. Uh, Gauteng feels that uh, we, are, um, we, we are unduly harsh on people who are trying to make a living and that uh, it is the men who should be criminalized for what they do, because from Gauteng's pers perspective, this is an executive pleasure resort. <laughs> so, so, so the proposal is to change it around so that we criminalize what the men do as opposed to what the women do. That is the proposal you will find in the, in the documentation. <laughs> Or let you put somebody supporting you. <laughs> Thank you very she's much. She's from Houting. <laughs> I'm sure she's from Houting. Any questions? One, two, three, four, five, five hands. Then I'll take more hands. Next question. Next commission. Thank you very much, Kunita Anja from uh, Sunday Times. Uh, I just have two questions. The first one is uh, at Minister Sisulu. Um, we know that the controversial issue of this conference has been uh, the fact that there were males in, uh, included in the ANC Women's League delegation. And I know that they, they sort of contradicted the part where they said they needed them because they were women were too emotional. Thank you. But, uh, okay, I said, uh, my first question to Minister Sisulu is about the, the fact that there were men that were added to the delegation of the Women's League. And you've spoken out a bit about patriarchy and sexism that persist. Um, what does it do, uh, in your opinion, to the advancement of women's rights for a women's organization to reach out to the expertise of males to bolster their argument? That's number one. The second question is, has this Commission on Social Transformation considered the fiscal uh, consequences of increasing the social grants? Because you know, currently we have 17 uh, million people on, on social grants, and can the country afford it in the wake of the recession and other economic difficulties? Thank you. Good morning, Faria. We haven't seen you in a long time. Thanks for coming. Yes. Your guys have been keeping us on our toes. You proceed, sir. Uh, to Sokomalo, ARD, German Radio. Uh, on social cohesion, um, what were the specific uh, recommendations around xenophobic violence? Seeing that since 2008, um, a lot of measures have been taken, but it continues to, to come up with a lot of complaints around uh, the perceived government's failure to act in time before lives and properties lost and uh, also bring those who perpetrated to book and others also alleging the government is failing to properly control illegal immigration. Thank you. Okay. Pass it right to the back. As I'm chef from Mail and Guardian. Thank you, it's uh, Govan Whittles from the Mail and Guardian. Uh, what was the policy conference's analysis of drugs such as Nyaupe, Duk, and Mandrax and the impact it has on family relationships? And then secondly, were there any discussions about the proliferation of homeless people in our country, particularly homeless young people? And what does the ANC think we should do about that? Thank you. There was a hand here. Yes. Tabo? 
Kamoshwala Mashao from How TV. Um, over the past few months or so, and I could be generous when I'm saying that we've seen an escalating uh, number of reports on racist attacks and racism playing itself in society on various issues. And the majority of the receiving ends are obviously blacks and Africans in particular, which the ANC says that they are protecting. And also not too long ago, the NEC conceded that uh, these, uh, the, the, racists seem, the racists seem to be emboldened, these attacks and so on. So, um, was the agency expressed in commissions in terms of time frames uh, on dealing with the anti-racism legislature and, uh, and, and, and pinning it down, specifically because it is one of the biggest threats to uh, social cohesion? Thank you. Welcome back. I know you've been away for days. The Pulit Bureau is in session. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Zizi. Uh, <clears throat> The question for me, Minister Colum Gambi from ENCA, is that uh, there's been, uh, it's reported that there's been a lot of uh, robust debate in these commissions, but it would appear that uh, things took an ugly turn when some people were said to have used language perhaps that might not have been liked by other delegates, and so people are threatened with, uh, with being taken to disciplinary hearings. Uh, what has been your sense, or in particular in commissions such as the economic transformation one? And also, what is, your, what is the status of people who are in this conference who are said to be professionals, people like Luda Lebelo, who are said to have been very, very disruptive inside these commissions? What is their status? Because we understand they're not delegates, per se. Uh, and then perhaps uh, lastly... Um, question has skipped my mind now. Oh, it, it, it regards the, the intimidation minister, because in the lead up to this conference, you were one of those people who were said to have been, uh, who, have, who were said to have received death threats. What, what would your sense be around just the, the safety and security aspect of this conference? Thanks. Just to remind you, we are dealing with social transformation. <laughs> it shows he's been absent. Yeah, just, just to remind you, we are dealing with social transformation. Yeah. 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 You can now answer. <laughs> um, I'm being taught. Uh, <laughs> language that is uh, savvy and sensitive on issues that could otherwise be very problematic. So I'm learning um, with time. Uh, may I indicate that we did not have any uh, disruptive elements in our, in our um, committees. They were actually very buoyant, uh, vibrant uh, uh, committees. Uh, therefore, I would not be able to reflect on what was happening in the Economic uh, uh, Committee. The reason why we had such a vibrant, um, peaceful engagement is because the issues that we're dealing with are issues that are very fundamental to our people. Each delegate in there had brought with them something that they felt is absolutely first-generation right for all our people. Houses, water, basic needs and safety and all of those things. And there was very little that we were in disagreement about. Uh, so I think I will leave the issue of the, the, the economic transformation uh, committee to, uh, to themselves when they come here if they haven't been. I'll answer some of these questions and uh, give over to um, the Deputy Minister of Women here. Um, <laughs> You know, we... <laughs> it's been 70, 72 exciting hours. It has been like 72 exciting hours for you. Uh, um, um, what do we say about men in women's um, delegations? Can I leave it to you to respond to? Yeah, I'll leave you, it to you, somebody else. You'll leave it to somebody else. <laughs> No, we, 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 we were not dealing with delegations. That is, the accredit that is a matter for accreditation. 
we were dealing with the Social Transformation Committee. And the men who were there were duly delegated to deal with all the issues that we were discussing. Uh, have we discussed the f fiscal consequences of the work that we do? Yes, uh, we're not on very good terms with uh, uh, people who manage finances in the state because they say every time that we, the Social Transformation Committee meets, then they've got to be very worried about the increasing costs of what comes out of there. Enoch Godongwane in particular thinks that uh, there should be some kind of uh, representativity of um, the finance department in all our deliberations so they keep us on, on point about the, uh, the consequences of increasing grants and all of those things. However, what we have here is a report of the deliberations and what our people have brought forward for us to consider. We will then sit down when we put it together to work out whether this is affordable or not. Uh, we will have the affordability uh, uh, measurement at the point at which we're processing it for conference. But we are, we are aware of that, but we did allow people to express themselves and we, this is what we have brought to you. These are our people's wishes, and these are, these are their recommendations. Uh, and the Mail and Guardian, yes, we did, uh, I think it, it was, I, I erred in not ma uh, mentioning this. One of the most serious crimes that we're dealing with is the, the, the rise in drug abuse, uh, resulting in a whole lot of uh, um, misdemeanor and antisocial behavior, especially uh, from the young. Uh, and we've looked at this and we have recommended that we, our social workers pay particular attention to this. We would like to ensure that we have greater number of centers that will help, rehabilitation centers to help people out of drug addiction. It is a serious, serious problem for us in our communities, especially in communities that are high density communities. Uh, what are we doing about it? We are wanting to ensure that uh, we have public education about this. We want uh, harsher uh, sentences for people who are peddling drugs or selling drugs. Um, and uh, we, we discuss this uh, at length. Um, what are we doing about um, a, a accelerating the issue of racism? We have uh, or de or dealing with racism. We have a bill before Parliament, we call it the Hate Crimes Bill, and it is serving before Parliament, and we will uh, monitor the progress of the bill and ensure that it is accelerated and uh, brought out to the public domain so that all of us engage with the contents of that bill. Uh, the disruptive nature, we've dealt with that. But there are other matters on social co cohesion here which you could deal with. Thank you. Um, I think the, the important thing is that the, I mean the, the commission noted the fact that there is this emphasis on, on radical economic transformation, whereas the uh, Mangaun conference actually resolved on radical socio-economic transformation because there's an interconnection between social transformation and economic transformation. And, and if you look at, for instance, the, um, the issue of, uh, uh, I mean, the whole range of issues that are being raised, they're not only about, uh, you know, uh, social cohesion or the uh, collapse of the social and moral fabric, but they also interlink to economic issues. I mean, if you uh, speak about how long are we going to keep people in social grants, it's about how are they you know, uh, integrated into the mainstream economy. Are they getting jobs? Are they becoming entrepreneurs and all of that? So, so that interlinked was actually made by the commission that, uh, 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 you know, it's not only about social transformation, but it's about radical socioeconomic transformation. Uh, you know, if you look at issues of social cohesion and the issues around racism, for instance, and racism as a question of power and people uh, you know, knowing that, I mean, being more important, knowing that, you know, you can call someone a baboon and, uh, and there are no consequences. Or you can shoot someone and say you mistaken them for a pig 
and there are no consequences. It's, it's a question of power. It's people who are weak, who've got no legislation that protects them, who uh, have no or who have uh, uh, absolutely no trust in the fact that the justice system will protect them, uh, who are vulnerable, uh, and therefore, I mean, as opposed to or vis-a-vis -vis people who have power, who are, uh, you know, owners of farms or owners of factories who victimize their workers and all of that. So, so, so that's why there was this emphasis around, uh, you know, the, the whole notion of a, a radical socioeconomic uh, transformation and, and that this commission and, and its work is important in uplifting uh, people, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, socially and all of that. Then the, the question of the fiscal consequences and given the recession, uh, I mean, obviously that's one of the things that will be looked at. But I think what came out strongly was, firstly, that extend that for uh, people who are still studying, who are still in school, and those who are not between that age, link them to job opportunities or all the other opportunities that are available in government. It is not the desire of the ANC to keep people as long as possible within the social grant system, but it's also obviously not the desire of the ANC to see people die uh, of hunger. Uh, because they don't have means uh, of, uh, of, uh, of substances. So, so obviously that, that, that balance uh, would, be, uh, would be made. Um, and uh, what else? Okay, yeah, uh, I think the, our commission was, was not as exciting as... Uh, no, 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 it, uh, was, it was very exciting. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying in terms of, of, of uh, some of the things that Goli was raising uh, it, it, it was not uh, as it was not exciting a, it was not as it was not as sexy as the economics yes uh, but very would, fundamental to it, us it wouldn't make the tabloids but we're quite excited with how stimulating it was you know intellectually and it actually covers the business of the of the conference uh, thank you may i add that the one report that all our communities will be looking forward to is this one, <laughs> because it touches everybody's life. So that, that, that should put paid to exciting. Exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm doing my last five questions because this commission is ready and they have to go. Yes. Kalata, um, Ferriero, Pete, you still have to meet with the SC, you remember? <clears throat> This is just going to be a lie move, Baba. Tell us to recognize. Yeah? No, no, no. Pass, pass, pass. Okay, you can, you can start. Can I go? Okay, then. Thank you so much. Aldrin Simpia from SABC TV News. Um, just three questions quickly. Is it enough for the ANC Social Transformation Committee to be merely concerned on the issue of xenophobia, considering that it, um, the fatal impact that it has and the contestation that's currently happening. Are there plans in how do us as South Africans deal with the issue of um, xenophobia? Minister, during your briefing last time, um, a note was slipped to you, uh, which was, if condoms are free, why aren't sanitary towels free? Has the commission resolved on that? And the final question is, and I don't know whether this was part of the discussions, but if you drive around Gauteng, for instance, I don't know about the other provinces, if you drive around Gauteng and you look at our intersections, you find parents, mothers with toddlers who are three, two years old and five years old. Why aren't we doing anything about that? Is that not a form of abuse? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Nick Kale. I'm from a college of News. I've got two easy questions. You, in fact, I need clarity on this. Uh, you spoke about uh, libraries uh, having books that don't reflect to the people of this country. What are you saying here? Can you spin more information? Are you saying you want to see 50 50 or another 90 10 in the libraries? All right, question two. There's another hit and run point you made here. Proposal about 20% of the budget being targeted for for the funding of the infrastructure. Now the big question is: uh, What are you going to do in those municipalities where you are in opposition? Thank you. Thank you, Lister. Just taking my my colleague.
colleague's question further. Under the scope of, of social cohesion, non-sexist, non-racist, but if we listen to reports of uh, racial epithets being used in commissions, particularly to senior party leaders who just happen to be non-black African or white, is the ANC still a home for all? leadership in front. I suggest that we won't be able to comment on things that were said in commissions, commissions which I are now reporting, which all of us were not in commissions. But uh, can, may I overrule? The, the, the ANC is a home for all. The question was wrong. Uh, whatever the question, <laughs> the ANC is a home for all. Please report that. Pass to, yes. Uh, hi, I'm Ayandam Mshuli uh, from the African Times. Um, I'd just like to touch on uh, the, the health issue. Um, we, we find ourselves in a situation where our hospitals in South Africa are short uh, in supply of doctors, but then we also have a situation where uh, doctors are unemployed in the country as well. Um, has the commission looked at this issue? And if you have, um, what, 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 what is your position on that? And then also, um, we, we we in an economy where access to affordable uh, housing uh, is uh, is an issue, and the National Housing Finance Corporation uh, was established to deal uh, with this issue. Um, now, just just looking at um, at the issue of uh, affordable housing, what uh, other institutions? Um, are going to, to, to come together to, to try and address the problem of affordable housing because we have a lot of people who don't have access in the gap markets um, to this. Thank you very much. Hi. Uh, Nira and Chelsea from the Mail and Guardian. Just uh, on the housing issue, ma'am. Um, firstly, um, the, um, uh, the use of state land near in the vicinity of, of, of cities. Um, does that mean that government is any closer to completing its audit of uh, public-owned land and state-owned land? And if so, do you have any timelines around that? And secondly, um, you know, the Constitutional Court ruled quite recently that um, before a court order for eviction can be handed, do uh, handed down, uh, alternative accommodation has to be um, um, uh, established already for, for, for the people who would be moved. Um, has the NC discussed um, other mechanisms around um, uh, alternative accommodation which do not include temporary relocation areas, which as you would know in the case of Blickiesdorp have been around for over 15 years and are still and are really permanent relocation areas? I'll be very quick. Um, Masa Kekana from Eyewitness News. Two short questions. You spoke about singing the national anthem in its proper format. Is, is there any talk about changing it? And you also spoke about um, racism and its new manifestations. If you could please just give examples of this kind of new manifested racism. The second question, please, Masa. Manifestation of racism. Good day. I'm Shava from Hillbro Radio. Did the commission overlook the problem that creates by public drinking to our communities, more especially playing a role on human and children abuse, whereby at the end of the day, men are also being abused by the cessation of public drinking? Thank you. Uh, this one goes to uh, Minister Sisulu. This is, to, this is to do mostly about dress code, especially to our lovely women and uh, daughters and whosoever. There's a social peak that has been uh, all around in the social media of, of uh, Mazota or Zot. How do you work on those uh, kind of uh, uh, incident or... But why don't you ask me instead? What, 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 what <laughs> This is mostly what, about what, the dress code of women in public places like that one, which actually have been shown all over the social media. Sure How do we respond on that one? Uh, good day. Luan <laughs> Mtongo from KCFM. Uh, my question, what is the view of the Commission with regards to the clarion call made by South Africans about to regulate uh, social media? We have seen many people in Guamashu dying because of fake news that was broken social media. So what is your view as uh, ANC? Fake news. Why 
Thank you very much, uh, Lukanya Talata from the SABC. Um, my question just centers around the issue of social economic transformation and how much uh, discussion went into the issue of entrepreneurship and encouraging that within the communities. We know that uh, South Africa, the youth is unemployed and everybody, in, uh, the, the economy isn't growing fast enough to be able to absorb and create the jobs that are needed. So how much uh, are our youth actually encouraged and, and assisted to develop their own businesses and, and, and pursue uh, an, an entrepreneurial line? Uh, thank you very much. Feryl Afuji from the Huffington Post. Good morning. I'm just checking whether radical socio-economic transformation has replaced radical economic transformation as the key campaign of the conference, and what's the difference between the two? My colleague here asked if you have an indication of hate crimes law. What are the kinds of sentences you're looking for on them? Yeah. Beat. Thank you, Zizi. Uh, Peter Ritoy from Huffington Post. Uh, Minister Susuri, you said the Commission was concerned about poverty, unemployment, and the social ills it brings. Uh, we've now seen a number of reports the last couple of weeks about state capture um, and corruption and the impact thereof. Uh, a, a report recently about an economic development project where taxpayers' money was diverted to fund the Gupta's wedding. Um, was this discussed, the impact of state capture and, uh, and, and corruption on, on unemployment, the poor, um, and the indigent. Thanks. If there's one person who has been very consistent and coherent in asking one question, very consistent. I must say that. We can now take questions. Pete. If there's one person who has been consistent and coherent about an answer, it has been given by me. Can, can we stop? Can we stop at that to beat? No. Okay, all right, then we will, we will come back to that. Um, you don't want me leaning over. <laughs> um, on the issue of whether or not sanitary towels, which was an issue we made an example of uh, when we gave a press briefing on this matter, yes, we have agreed that sanitary towels for uh, people at school should be uh, free. Um, on the issue of uh, local content uh, in the libraries, did we put a percentage to it? No, we did not put a percentage to it. We just noted the fact that while we have made advances in, in establishing libraries, which was part of our resolution in the 53rd con conference, we are still struggling to ensure that uh, there is sufficient representation of African literature in, uh, and, and works in our libraries, but there is no percentage yet. Uh, in the, on the issue of uh, the percentage of the infrastructure that should be given to municipalities to ensure that there are sufficient facilities for, sporting, uh, for sports grounds and community halls, um, we took in a uh, proposal that had something like 15 to 20 percent of um, the uh, municipal infrastructure grant. However, we do not um, encourage our conference to determine the budgetary outcomes and al allocations that, um, that government is responsible for. We have the necessary procedures for that. But uh, we have got a, a percentage that we would like ring-fenced in our municipal infrastructure grant to ensure that uh, in the rural areas, particularly, there is sufficient infrastructure for sport. We feel that sport will then play a very important role uh, in social cohesion. It has in the past. We would like to encourage that it continues to do so. What we forgot to indicate is that we have now agreed that physical education will be compulsory in all our schools. Uh, is the ANC home for all? It is home for everybody. Please underline that. That is the message from the social transformation. This is how we're going to transform our society. That is the foundation of what we believe in. Um, uh, then uh, what are we doing about the issue of uh, um, medical facilities 
uh, we discussed that matter and especially the shortage of doctors and uh, we noted that because a number of uh, our uh, delegates complained about this matter and we have referred it to um, the health education and health uh, committee what we what we do is taking all the recommendations that come from our delegates and when they fall outside of our own uh, uh, responsibility we delegate it to the correct um, commission so that will be dealt with by the education and uh, health commission when you do find them what are we doing about the issue of affordable housing? We have established uh, in, um, in government a housing, uh, a human settlements bank, which we hope will deal with the issue of the, the missing gap and assist people to, uh, to access affordable housing. Um, and on the issue of us proclaiming that we are going to um, uh, take over all the land that belongs to the state and uh, public land within the precincts of the city or within uh, easy access to the city. The question was, has government completed its audit? No. Even as government has not completed its audit, we are aware of land right now that belongs to the state or that, it's, that is public land and where, where we find that it is not uh, in, in our hands, we are considering the instrument of expropriation that, of expropriating that land. We want to make sure that cities truly represent what South Africa should be, integrated and uh, with, with all the facilities and amenities open to all, and where people who are uh, employed in the city uh, have easy access to their workplace and have easy access to other amenities offered by the city. Uh, temporary accommodation, uh, temporary accommodation is a, um, uh, is a policy of government and uh, I think the problem that we are suffering from is monitoring some of the ways in which our policies are carried out. And Blickisdorp is one of them and we're going to make sure that we can get back to that. What we're talking about here are general issues that still con continue to be a problem to our society. We didn't go into particular details such as uh, is mentioned here now. The national anthem, uh, yes, we insisted on singing the national anthem because at the opening of our session uh, of this conference, we had the, um, the, the Gosi Sigalela uh, Sondonga um, hymn sung as opposed to the national anthem. And when we got to our commissions, we felt that perhaps we needed to ensure that we, we insist that it is the national anthem that is sung at all times because we hang on to some of these issues as part of that which provides a social cohesion vehicle for us. Um, abuse of men, uh, shall I leave that to you? Uh, and uh, entrepreneurship from Talata, what are we doing about that, especially for the youth? Ferial, uh, what do we define as hate crimes? Uh, we will come back to that uh, later on. And what sentences did we propose? We have not proposed uh, sentences, minimum sentences for that. But what we did do is propose minimum sentences for violence against women. And we said it should be between 15, minimum sentence, 15 and 20 years. And I do know some women said lock them up forever but uh, we, we tried to be very rational and 15 and 20 is what we have in our documentation. Would you? Okay, thank you. The, I think... The oh, sorry, on the issue of corruption, yes, we've been very strong on the issue of corruption. Uh, it is a very corrosive um, uh, matter in our society and uh, it, 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 it has actually created a, uh, this trust deficit between society and government. And where we are concerned as social transformation, we would like to make sure that this is frowned upon by everybody because it is what we think antisocial behavior in the very least. And um, if you will allow us to stop at that, uh, uh, we, we, are, we are an anti-corruption force in social transformation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think the, firstly, the, 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 the question around sanitary towels and condoms, uh, 
the, I think the feeling is that we should stop comparing the two. I think there's been this unfair comparison around, yes, you're providing free condoms, why are you not providing free sanitary towels? So although we've resolved that the state should provide free sanitary uh, towels, but we think that to, it, it stereotypes the availability of free condoms wherever they are available, uh, you know, to mean that they are condoms for boys or for men, whereas condoms are uh, and should be used for the protection of those who are involved in the sexual activity. Um, you know, so, so I think the comparison of, uh, you know, you providing condoms but you're not providing sanitary towels is, uh, uh, is not a justifiable comparison. Uh, the two should not be regarded as, uh, as being uh, equal. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the question of the homeless centers and, uh, I mean, the, the, the increase in homelessness uh, and, and all of uh, the, I mean, the, the state does provide uh, shelter for, uh, for the homeless and also uh, foster care homes for uh, the homeless also. That may not be uh, enough, but I think, uh, you know, the social development is doing uh, as much as it can to ensure that uh, uh, there is uh, that. Um, and then uh, I think linked to the question around the national anthem was the discussion whether it will be changed. No, there was no discussion around whether we uh, will change the national uh, anthem. Um, and, and then the um, public drinking uh, and its effects on uh, violence against women uh, and uh, children. Well, the the question is the abuse of alcohol and other substances, whether consumed privately or publicly. Um, and I think that's, that's what the, the, the commission raised as a, a concern, a big cause for concern. Uh, and I think there was also discussion around the, uh, uh, the, the policy that is in discussion in uh, uh, government around uh, uh, the, the use and abuse of alcohol and that uh, uh, the, 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 that needs to be uh, accelerated. The um, entrepreneurship, yes, uh, uh, as part of the uh, increase in funding for the NYTA, uh, part of the focus of or, or what it should be focusing on is to promote uh, youth entrepreneurship or interest uh, for young people in entrepreneurship. Uh, in fact, our major concern is that the interest of young people in taking up jobs, uh, I mean in taking up entrepreneurial uh, initiatives, is actually on the decline on economies of our scale. Uh, and that we really need to be encouraging more and more young people to pursue entrepreneurship. In fact, most uh, graduates would rather join the unemployed, the, uh, the queue of the unemployed rather than uh, use the uh, skills and their qualifications uh, to see themselves as uh, creators of jobs. Uh, so so we, we think that we really need to be changing that mentality. And there are uh, resources, funds made available throughout government to support uh, youth entrepreneurship, but we believe that uh, you know, more needs to be done in, uh, in that uh, uh, regard. And I think finally, the question of the, of the racial epitaph, I think uh, the racial epitaphs which were raised in some of the commission, I think that would be uh, regrettable and I think as emphasized by uh, Comrade uh, Sisulu that uh, uh, the ANC is a home for all. Uh, you know, it, it would be regrettable if uh, people are not engaged on the basis of their views but on the basis of their age, gender, racial, uh, or uh, religious of, or whatever uh, belief uh, that they have. And, and I think it's, it's obviously uh, condemnable. Uh, the, or oh, the, the dress code. Um, I mean, we, we <laughs> yeah, she's, <laughs> but I think, the, uh, I think the point is that, as, uh, you know, there, there's, been, there's been a lot of uh, justification of violence against women on the basis of or allegedly on the basis of, of what uh, uh, they were. Uh, and I think it would be unfortunate if 
we would want to be seen to be regulating what people should wear uh, and all of that. Uh, people are free uh, to wear that which uh, they believe, uh, you know, fully expresses who they are, uh, you know, without any uh, fear of uh, being uh, publicly shamed for what they're wearing or uh, without any uh, danger of them being uh, violently abused or in, in whatever form. And, and I think that that's, a, 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 that's important. You know, we, we've heard stories of, uh, you know, women uh, being uh, sexually abused because they apparently asked for it uh, based on what they were wearing. Uh, so we don't think that it's in our business to be regulating what people should be uh, or how people should be uh, dressed. Uh. Um, there was a question here about abuse of men. We are cons we, we've been repeating, um, repeatedly uh, mentioning abuse of women, and yet men are equally abused. But I was going to say that there is discrimination even in our committee. I don't remember seeing the picture that you're talking about. You were going to show me. Uh, but it seems that uh, it, it, it's been circulating among the uh, relevant sectors of the community. <laughs> I missed out completely. Abuse of men. Thank you very much uh, to the social transformation. It is only one question before I, I make just one remark. No, I did, I did want to indicate that we deal with these matters uh, on an equal basis. There was a question here about abuse of men that I'd like Buti to respond to. <laughs> okay. Um, I think the, the, the question of um, uh, abuse of men, uh, the, there was an acknowledgement firstly that the way in which we socialize, particularly young boys, um, through whatever forms, be it traditional, be it educational, and all of that, uh, you know, the, the, the idea that, uh, you know, young boys are the, well, should be brought up into men and, and what it means to be uh, a man is, is actually very detrimental, and that the socialization of both boys and girls should be uh, the same, and that's why part of the resolutions were saying that we, instead of taking a gel, girl child to work, for instance, it must be take a child to work. Um, you know, and that uh, although girls have been, uh, you know, victims, the isolation of boys in the process create actually long-term, uh, 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 you know, damage uh, in terms of their uh, socialization, and that we equally condemn the abuse of men, which is a rare occurrence, uh, you know, in as much as we condemn, uh, or, or it's not reported for whatever reason, uh, people probably might be embarrassed to go and report that they are being abused uh, at home or wherever, but that we, we, we uh, you know, dedicate equal condemnation to abuse of men as would that of women. But however, what has been rife uh, and, and in recent times, uh, and, and, and we know that, which is what the commission came out quite strongly against, is the abuse of women and the killing of women and all of that. Thanks. Finally, uh, no, we did not discuss the issue of the Guptas and state capture uh, in our commission. However, in closing, I'd like to indicate that uh, we practiced social, the co social cohesion that we preach. Uh, we had a very cohesive uh, uh, environment in our commission, and we um, are committed to ensuring that the message goes out to our people that we would like to assure them of a better life that we promised them in 1994. We work continuously to make sure that we realize this promise to them. Thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, thank you very much. Don't go away because communication is here, but we can give you five minutes just to file and live crossings. I see Angie Siwe Makinana is not here. Just, just to apologize, 
Just to apologize earlier when the president was doing a walkabout, just to express our gratitude to you guys as the ANC of taking your time to be here. There was a request from the plenary that the president must immediately come to the plenary because there was a report to be given from the steering committee, which is a committee that runs the, a politically the conference. So we apologize, but we we'll still express that gratitude to you of your work that we have been doing for the past seven days since we're here. Thank you very much. That was Minister Lindy Wessusulu together with Budi Manamela briefing the media on social transformation.